Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Paul Giancarlo. I'm a M&E technical specialist for Autodesk. Um, at this time, um, I'd like to show you how to do a basic crowd effects animation um, using procedural techniques and MASH. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So um, first thing I want to do, I want to have a, um, as you can see, I have a model here, uh, which is a zombie. So what I want to do is just import in a, a walk animation cycle that I have um, that I have here. So in this case, actually, it's going to be a run cycle. So as you can see, I'm importing it. And if I scroll up through the timeline, you can see it's actually um, going in this particular direction. So if I'm going to use this in MASH, what I don't want to have is that translation on the actual heap. So first thing I want to do is just take the uh, translate X, Y, and Z, and I want to get rid of uh, that animation. So I'm just going to break the connection. Um, as you can see now, I have a, a walk cycle of 24 frames, um, which is pretty much on spot. So once I'm ready with this, um, what I want to do is just export um, the, the body or these, these parts as an Alembic file. So I'm just going to take um, this, and I'm going to go to cache, Alembic cache, export selection to Alembic. I want to hit the option box and I want to make sure uh, if you scroll down and the advanced options that you have UV right turned on. And if you have sets, you want to have the sets also uh, on. So once you're there, all you have to do is just make sure that you are exporting only the time slider. So in this case, it's going to be 24 frames. So just going to hit export selection. Um, it's going to ask me to give the file a name, so I'm just going to call it walk cycle um, underscore woman zombie underscore zero one. I want to export that. And now, what I want to do is want to do the same thing with maybe uh, three, four, or maybe five different models. So it's pretty much the same thing. Could be different type of um, animations or cycles. So uh, I'm just going to stop the video. I'm going to do the rest of them, and then we're going to continue on on the on the following uh, scene. Okay, now we're back. So um, next step now is to uh, bring back all these um, ABC files that we've created, so these caches that we've created. So I have um, this ground plane that I've created using a deform um, a texture deformer with the noise. Uh, pretty simple. And I'm just going to bring back all these uh, Alembic files. So I'm just going to go to cache, Alembic cache, and import Alembic. Um, so if I go to ABC my, uh, on my walk cycle, you see I have five different ones. So I'm going to import all of them. So you can see I have my, uh, my guy here, which has got this um, animation. So all I need to do for it to be on a cycle is select any of the, uh, the geometries and set the cycle type uh, on the Alembic node to loop. And now these guys are going to be in a perfect loop. So I'm just going to take all of this set for the ground and I'm going to group it and I'm going to call it zombie01. So now I'm just going to pause the video and I'm going to continue bringing in uh, the rest of the animations. Okay, so I'm back importing all these cache files and as you can see, as I scrub through the timeline, um, they all have the same animation and they're all running at the same time. Uh, so first thing we want to do um, in order to offset their animation is just pretty much just add a, a quick offset on each one of the Alembic files. So I'm just going to add for the first one, maybe two. Um, on this one, maybe I add a minus uh, four. Um, let's go to maybe this one and add a five. As you can see, they're changing the positions. And this one could be maybe three. Now, if I scroll through, they all have the same cycles, but they look like they're on a different, um, they look at a bit different. That's that's the whole idea here. So next step, um, as you can see, I have my ground. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. In this case, something around that, maybe. Okay, so that's good. So next step now is, uh, is to create a mesh network. So what I want to do is just create a just a plane like this. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, something like so. Um, I have 
10 subdivisions uh, on the high and, and width. So all I need maybe is just five of them. We don't need really that much and you'll see why. So next step is to, to go to the FX menu, go to mesh and I'm going to create a mesh network and I'm going to make sure that it's set to mesh and it's also set to a grid. So I'm just going to hit apply and close and I'm going to go into my repro mesh and I'm going to add a pretty quickly a shader um, just to see it you know, with a different color. So I'm just going to add a red color. And now that I'm here, I'm just going to go to the distribute node and we're going to give it a little bit of distance, maybe 2000 by 2000. That's it. And maybe increase the amount of them, something like so. As you can see, I have a, a lot of cubes or sorry, um, rectangles there. So, but why is that? So next thing you want to do is just to take that repro mesh. Um, select the ground and I want to add on the animation menu the form I want to add a shrink wrap uh, as you can see if I go to the shrink wrap and you see why I'm doing this um, I want to make sure that the projection is set to vertex normals uh, maybe do it bi-directional and the main reason we're doing this is because we want to have uh, the zombies to walk uh, and follow along this piece of geometry with uh, the terrain. So now if we add, if we go to the mesh network, right, and we add maybe a transform node, um, sorry, a transform, I added a random. So just add a back to mesh and add a transform node. I can take a controller node. If I right click in here, I can create one which this gives me this locator here. So now if I move that locator, you can see that actually following along uh, with the terrain. So now I can animate that, I can do whatever I want. So, okay, so once we have this mesh network set up, all we need to do is just take all of our um, zombies here, go to the effects and uh, menu and create another uh, mesh network. In this case, instead of mesh, we want to make sure that we use the instancer. Hit apply and close. Um, and on the distribute node, uh, we want to also make sure that we're going to be using the mesh. And we want to connect the first repro mesh that we've generated and connect it into the input mesh. So once you're there, uh, you see we have all of our guys in position. Um, and we can add a bit more of them because they are um instances this, this is going to move quite quickly um so say 60 but as you can notice uh we have the same uh, zombie all over so in order to get uh all the rest of the five for the four um we need to add an id node so once we add the id node um you can see the id type is set to linear so we can change that to maybe random as you can see now i have all of our zombies in there and once we're here now we can just pretty much just hide this guy and if I animate uh, this here you can see the actually following uh, the, the the terrain you can see the following the terrain in here so next step is going to be just to animate um, animate this node so we're gonna break the connection there just gonna say uh, go to frames zero. I'm gonna add a key. They're gonna 120. I'm gonna move them all over here and set another key. So there you go. So now if I hit play, you can see they're gonna be actually following that terrain. So this one's a little bit too much too big so might look a bit weird but uh say if it wasn't so much so something a bit more realistic like this now you you should be able to get a much nicer result so yeah so there you go
So that's one quick way to set up a crowd. Um, very simple crowd using MASH and Maya 2018. So thank you very much and see you next time.